It's just natural, all au naturel. There's probably a lot of, a lot of girls that would like that. All right, that's doing whatever it's doing. That's going. Here we go. All right, so since we have a business meeting tonight, we're going to forego singing. Oh, I got to turn this on, don't I? Am I on now? One second. It's off now. Now it's on. I'm on. Are you on? No. I can't hear me. I mean, I can hear me up here, but. Well, I'll just talk louder and we'll keep rolling. So we're going to forego the singing. I'm going to take prayer requests in a minute, but I want it to, in fact, we'll start with prayer requests. Uh, we do need to pray for the whole situation in the Middle East. Ah, uh, did you ramp it up too quickly? He's not paying me any mind. Yeah. Did you ramp it up too quickly and it flipped the breaker? The, um... Anyway, we need to pray for the situation in the Middle East. Um, I'll just leave it at that, that there's some craziness going on. I think we need to pray for our own country. I, there's so much, I'm going to try not to ramble too much, but there's so much craziness going on in the media and in social media today. Frankly, I'm sure, like me, you find it kind of hard to discern what to believe and what not to believe. Uh, with all the illegal immigrants coming into the United States, you know, there are, seems to be pretty decent evidence uh, that a lot of these people are military age and what's going on. We need to pray for the country. We need to pray for the situation in the Middle East. We need to pray for, we probably have people in the membership of the church or relatives of the membership of the church who could be activated or deployed to go here or there. So uh, this is really... Uh, I wouldn't say heavy on my heart, but it is a great concern. I think, uh, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, those of us who know Christ should be pretty excited because uh, things are ramping up towards what could be. No one knows when Christ will return, but it looks like it could be soon. Amen. And so uh, that should encourage us, and we should try to be um, more faithful witnesses during these difficult times like this. Uh, we do want to pray for Bailey as she is stateside. We want to continue to pray for uh, Joe and Stefan as they are in Africa trying to do ministry. We want to pray for Kylie uh -huh, and Kayla, which are two young ladies that are relatives of people in our church that... Uh, um, Maybe one of them is headed in the right direction, but both of them need need a good good movement of the Lord in their life. Amen. We have a long list of lost people that we're praying for. I think I mentioned it, but just in case I didn't, Bailey is there in the States. We want to uh, pray for her. Nick seems to be doing marvelously as the single dad in the, in the short time she's been gone, so kind of impressed there. Um, one of my son's co-workers... Uh, a guardsman um, rather than tell a whole bunch of stuff that I don't know how much I'm expected to tell or not tell let's just say he was being foolish and had something blow up in his face uh, and they thought for a time he was going to lose one eye um, he's not going to lose the eye he may or may not lose his job, but they've already bought him a cup that I'm the reason for the next safety meeting because he was being foolish. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, as a young sergeant there in Mississippi, but let's pray for his recovery. I'm not sure where he's in the hospital, but I know they took him to a greater hospital than what we had locally there. Uh, his name is Harper. But anybody else want to add something? Yes? I have a few. A few, okay. So that's basically like a light touch for him. Um, but 
But he's about to undergo all the big treatments like in the next week. Okay. Um, I don't know this couple's name, but they come by often. They have like a Catholic background and I invited them both to church. And um they I just I, I just want to say that they find salvation because they don't agree with the one way to heaven type thing because they don't really know if like Jesus is the way. So but I I was able to preach the gospel to him the other day, so that was cool. And then um a guy that works at the shop at on Flavor, his name's Mike. He had background, um background for like Jehovah Witness and stuff. He was forced to go to church. Um, by his parents as a kid, and I invited him to church, but he declined because um, just the trauma with that. And then my friend Allison, I spoke to you about. She um, she's coming back Friday, so we can take up to the church there soon. And, okay. And that everything with her relationship will either work out or find its like, solution one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was another hand. Yes, ma'am. Unspoken. Amen. Uh, also, my friend Stephen Lamont, um, they're still not giving him very long to live. He has a port put in so he can try to extend his life. Still praying for his son's uh, salvation. And I think one of his daughters is... is uh, Needs to, needs to either rededicate her life or get saved, and only her and the Lord knows. But anyway, let's continue to remember the Lamont family, tremendous Christians there in South Carolina, retired Navy people. Um, my buddy Gary has a new excitement about life, but they're still, he is officially on hospice. So they're not giving him long to live, but he's <laughs> determined to... Uh, he's gotten his heart right with the Lord and he's determined to be that guy they said had three months to live that lived 10 years. So let's, let's pray. He still has a very small child like Bridger's age. Yes, Mike. Oh, you're just, okay. Okay. Did you need, you got a, come on. Amen. And then uh, uh, Brittany's grandma, grandmother, uh, Gigi, she's uh, about 88. Uh, she's been pretty heavy on my heart lately. She's starting to um, forget a lot of things and uh, just, you know, uh, she's getting old, obviously. And uh, so I just uh, pray that, you know, she continues to stay strong and her health continues to stay so she will be good. Amen. So we've got Brittany's grandma, we've got Michael in Bethlehem, we've got Gary, we've got Unspoken, we've got Allison, we've got Mike, a JW who needs to come to Christ, we've got a Catholic couple who needs to find Christ, uh, Stephen Lamont, I mentioned, and uh, Shane, but not this Shane, with chemo. Anybody else? Amen to that. Anybody else? Is that a scratch or a prayer request? Okay. Would you pray? Brother Shane. Lord, there's so much going on in the world. We just humbly come to you and with a thankful heart that you are our Lord, our God, that you love us and you want the best for us. And even though there's trials that come through this life, that we can rely on you for the strength that the Holy Spirit would empower us to make it through those trials and come out better on the other end that we glorify you. And we think of all these requests now that have been mentioned and some that are unspoken. Lord, we ask that you work divinely in each one of those requests, that your will would be done, that you would be glorified, and that the saints would be edified in knowing that you have done a marvelous 
this word. We pray for this time of fellowship together and for the pastor as he continues to lead it. And for those families that are here and with family members that are scattered all over, that you bring them back safe and keep them healthy and strong. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I promised a sermonette uh, because we have a business meeting. So hopefully, you know, famous last words for a Baptist preacher, I'll be brief. Amen. Um, <clears throat> have you ever heard somebody say they don't have time for church? Mm-hmm. How many of those same people have time for football, but they don't have time for God? How many of those same people have time for travel? I can't tell you. And you probably can't tell me the number of people you meet here who say, well, I come to church, but I'm traveling while we're here. You know, so they don't come to church. They have time for travel and excitement, but they don't have time for God. Um, <clears throat> have time for education. Well, I'm further in my education right now, so I can't come to church. Or how many people do we know that have a business or are in our culture here, maybe a military career, and we have time for everything that it takes to advance the career, or maybe back home advance this small business or that small business. Uh, we have time for profit and portfolios, but we don't have time for God. Hmm. So, uh, nature lovers. How many times do we hear somebody say, well, I don't have to go to church because I can worship the Lord in the nature. It, it, it's funny to me. Now, I don't know if Phil experienced this in Arkansas, but most of the people that I've heard say that, they're not thinking about Lord when they're out in the nature. They're drinking cold beer. They're, they're not worshiping the Lord. Okay. But let's see what the Bible says about the whole nature thing. Solomon said, in, uh, he calls himself the preacher here in Ecclesiastes. He writes this towards the end of his life. And in the first chapter, verses 2 and following, he says, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, the sun goeth down, and hasteth to the place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about the north. It whirleth uh, about continually, and the wind returneth again according to the circuits. To his circuits all the rivers run to the sea, yet the sea is not full. It goes on and on and on, but basically the gist there about the nature is everything is vanity. All right? What about I'm going to further my education? Well, if you look down in, in verses 12 to 18 uh, of the first chapter there, he's talking about basically giving himself to education. I'm going to read you two verses there. He says, I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under the sun. This sore travail, this hard work hath God given to the Son of Man to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. And if you were to look in the 16th verse of the next chapter, he said, There is no remembrance of the wise more than the fool forever, seeing that which it now is in the days to come shall be forgotten, and shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man as the fool? So there's no, there, 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 there's no eternal profit in education, no eternal profit in nature. Um, well, what about party and wealth? I mean, you know, some people, all they think about is dames, dollars, drinks, and drugs, all right? That's, that's all they think about, all right? So Solomon tried all that stuff. Let's see what he has to say about party and wealth. He said, I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? He said, oh, well. That's just partying. Well, what, a, what about all that sex? Well, the man had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and he still spends the majority of the first four chapters of this book saying it's all vanity. Hmm. I think he probably knew more about those kinds of things than the rest of us. Live wisely. Well, we already read that. What's the, you know, because some of us, I, I find this... Uh, Somewhat shocking and somewhat aha. Uh -huh. Have you ever noticed that uh, 
Some people eat whatever they want to. They never run, they never exercise, and they live to be 100. Some people run four miles every day. They eat healthy and they die of a heart attack in their 60s or 50s or 40s, okay? How many people I have known in my life who got a quote-unquote clean bill of health one day and two days later they're dead on a basketball court in much better shape than the guy standing before you? How diet the guy that eats well the same way the guy that doesn't eat well? How diet the guy who's wise in his health the same way the guy who didn't wasn't wise in his health, all right? Uh, you say, labor. Oh, well, what does the Bible say about labor? Well, if you look in verses 18 and 19 of chapter 2, it says, I'm going to put my glasses on. I'm having a little trouble tonight. I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Ye shall, yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I've labored, wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is vanity. What's that mean? That means I could put up all the money, I, I could get all I can and can all I get and leave it to a son or a grandson who will blow it in six months. There, it's a wise thing to leave an inheritance to your children. The Bible says that. But in the eternal scheme of things, that, that, that there's no comfort in that because you don't know if they're going to use it wisely. You don't know if they're going to use it for the glory of Christ. Well, what about most of us know the story, but I'm going to read you a few verses from Mark. And uh, Christ is preaching, and he says... Verse 34, when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, so he's talking to his disciples and to lost people, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whatso whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what profit, what shall it profit a man? if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? I could go on there, but labor has no eternal value of itself. If my labor is glorifying God, then yes, there's some value there. But it, it, there's no saving value in it. It's not worthy of my time to put nature, to put wisdom, to put partying, to put wealth, to put living healthily, to put labor. Let's hit the health one more time. What does the Bible say about bodily exercise? But there is some profit, right? Profit is little. We all know the preacher could stand to go back to the gym. He hasn't really been since he took a new job. It's very clear to him that he needs to go back. There is a little profit in it, but what about the other things in life that we're trying to get to here? It says bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. So in other words, there's not only profit in serving Jesus now, but there's profit in serving Jesus eternally. Not just now, but eternally. Now, there's a lot of people today, we have in the Western world, we have accented, glorified, uh, built up individualism. Do you know it's really not biblical? The individual is important and God died for the individual. But his plan in the home is for a nuclear unit, mom, dad, children. His plan for the Christian is in a nuclear unit unit, pastor and people, a local church. In fact, the Bible says, again, this is something I have uh, it's something I have read to you multiple times, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he's faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hmm. Some things. If I'm going to hold my uh, hold my profession of faith steady, 
That's what it means to hold fast, to hold something steady. It requires my being a part, a faithful part of a local church. And every person within the local church is important. I don't have time. It's supposed to be a sermonette, so I don't have time to completely, you know, fill this out. But, you know, the Bible says every member is important. How many times have we used the example of stubbing that toe in the middle of the night? It's the littlest part of your body, but it stops you from moving when you stub it. Every part of the church is important, but it's because it's part of the whole. If we only have love, we're just another false religion. If we only have good works... It's just another false religion. We are to love one another and we are to provoke one another into love and good works. And then exhorting one another, that's lifting. That's Imagine when, when football was football. Now, anything that was good when I was in school, you get kicked out of the game for four quarters for doing. But when men played football, uh, occasionally somebody got badly injured. And two fellas had to have, most of the time now they have a timeout for an injury and the guy gets up and walks off. When they had timeouts for injury a hundred years ago when me and Derek played football, there might have been a stretcher involved. If the guy walked off, it took somebody on one side or maybe both sides to help him off the field. That's exhortation. That's lifting one another up. See, I don't know what difficulties Jacob had at work today. I don't know what difficulties uh, Corey had at work today. I know when he came in, he said work really drained him today. And the purpose of the church is it's a unit. It is much like a, a football team. The coach is trying to help the team as a unit and individuals within the team to be their best. Okay, it's much like that. It's much like a family. Dad is trying to help everybody else be all that they can be. That's the purpose of the church. Now, I, I, I'm coming in for a landing. Just listen to me for this second. Who does a hunter hang out with? Other hunters. Brother Derek and I, had we had some visitors here not too long ago, and, and uh, they hadn't been back. And, and I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm also not 100% thinking that, that I might be wrong. They asked us, when they found out we were from Alabama, they asked us if we wore eagle or roll tide, and we both said roll tide, and we ain't seen them since. People that roll tide hang out with people that roll tide. People that are UNC or NC State or whatever, or I know uh, Abe is a USC. That's not South Carolina, but Southern California. People who like things hang out together. Don't let somebody tell you they love Jesus and they don't want to get together with God's people. Mm -hmm. It's a farce. They're fooling themselves. They say they love Jesus. They don't want to get together with God's people. They lie into themselves. God's people build one another up. We pull one another up when they're struggling. And when they, when they are obstinate, we provoke them. We go, you know better than that. You know the scripture says. You see, it's not what John says. It's what the scripture says. Leon's a part of the church. It's not what Leon says, but if Leon is encouraging Corey and he gives Leon a verse, then Corey's going to listen to the verse. Whether that's an encouraging verse or a convicting verse, the church is God's tool for today. And I'm glad to see her growing. We want to see her growing more. So I'm going to pray and we're going to have a business meeting. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you.